Traders, hey, welcome to today's video. Super excited about this one because today what I wanna do is break down the ECC 11 strategy for you from A to Z to show you exactly how I use it and I interpret it with my own strategy. Before we get going today, I wanna to welcome you to my channel if it's your first time here. Be sure to go down below and hit that subscribe button as well as click that like button if you want to see more trading tutorials like this one you're about to see today. Now the ECC 11 strategy, first things first, is created by Dr. Kathy Kirkland. So I wanna give a huge shout out to her for creating this strategy and of course allowing me to put my own spin on it today. Secondly, I wanna give a massive shout out to Stephen Hooley, who is probably one of the most impressive developers on planet Earth and has created literally the most impressive trading software I have ever seen in which we will use in today's video. With that said, I hope you sit down, relax, get a pen and paper out because today's video is showing you exactly how I trade with the ECC 11 strategy. Hey, hey, hey. All right, everybody, so welcome to your ECC 11 Forex strategy training. Again, my name is Patrick Kenny. Super excited to have you here this evening, or of course, whenever you're watching this recording. I want to talk about the ECC 11 strategy and really the exact principle and the exact way that I use it. Before we get started here, one of the things that you must understand is that everybody seems to use this differently. Everybody's going to use this strategy a little bit differently. And the way that I use it is actually much more conservatively than the next person. But the reason that I do that is I'm only focused on a couple good trades per day with this strategy. And if I can do that, I will find myself heavily profitable in the market. So again, thank you so much for joining me today on this YouTube video. For those of you guys that have not already, be sure to hit that subscribe button and also click that like button if you're watching this because that helps the algorithm that'll get this out, this, get this out to more people to watch and of course enjoy and learn. So first things first, I'm gonna have you guys write down a little bit of information to get started. And that first information is the key steps with the ECC 11 strategy. With the way that I do things, I break this down into three key steps. Step number one is all about the cloud. We'll get into that in a minute in, in detail in the Ichimoku cloud. Step number two is the trigger line, which have everything to do with our conversion versus baseline, which again, in just a second, we will get into. And number three is our execution. Okay, now the goal of this training is to go through this slideshow, have you get this information down on a notepad, in which then we will actually head over to the charts and actually do this and actually go through the process. So again, if something doesn't make sense here on the slideshow, it's because I'm going to be actually showing you all the information on the charts in the next 20 minutes or so. All right, so the first things first is our three-step system. Now, moving forward, we have to get some basics out of the way prior to those three steps, and that is our setup info. First things first, you must have the web analyzer. The web analyzer is a plugin with iMarkets Live, and in order to follow along with this strategy, you must download it. Now, I'm not saying that you should get off this video if you haven't downloaded it yet. Watch for yourself and how we are doing this, but if you want to actually follow along and get the signals that we are taking, you're going to need to have the web analyzer. So after this video, feel free to go and get that. So once you have the web analyzer, the second thing you're going to want to do is change the strategy setting to Dr. Kathy Kirkland's ECC 11 strategy. Now what this looks like on the web analyzer is it looks like this. Down here under the strategy section, what you will notice is Dr. Kathy ECC 11. It might not say that, and if it doesn't, all you have to do is click the red text and make sure to change it, and it's at the top under scalping and short trades. So make sure to change it to Dr. Kathy Kirkland's ECC 11 strategy. Once you have done that, you just click it and hit save settings and reload, and as you can see, it will then look similar to this. Now what you wanna do is we wanna dive into the actual 
platform of the web analyzer and change some of our settings. You'll notice here it says change Ichimoku settings or your inputs to conversion line period being 6, baseline period being 13, lag and span 2 period being 26, and displacement being 13. How we do this is by going over here to the web analyzer section and in the middle you will notice a little settings button. You will see that in these three little visual areas. Click that button right here one time and it will pop up where it says Ichimoku at the top. The goal is to now go under inputs as we mentioned in the slideshow and change your inputs to what you see now. Again, as the slideshow said, conversion line periods to 6, baseline periods to 13, lag and span period uh, to 26, and displacement to 13. Furthermore, as we will go back and look on the slideshow again, I will like you to change your conversion line to a thick red. I have mine as the bottom left corner, and I have thickened it up right here. Uh, so again, click the bottom, and then click this bottom. Once you have done that, also change your baseline to a thick blue. So I'm using this bottom blue here, and I'm also thickening it up, all right? Finally, before we finish this setting change, what you want to do is on defaults, on this little arrow here, you want to go down and click Save as Default. Once you click Save as Default, simply hit the OK button. And these settings will now save so that every single time you open up the web analyzer, these settings will be saved and the charts will look exactly like you see now. You can see, you can visually see the red and blue line much more because we have thickened it and the cloud has changed due to our rearrangements of our settings. Now back over to our slides. Again, just to reiterate, you need to change your thickness of the conversion line to a thick red and you need to change the thickness of the baseline to a thick blue. And once again, just as a reminder, click the arrow to the right of the defaults, just as I just showed, and click Save as Default. So in a nutshell, in a brief breakdown, what are we doing before we dive in? We are using a three-step to execution system. Step one is all about the cloud. Just a second ago when I was on that chart, did you all see that purple cloud that was in the chart, that purple shaded area, that is known as the cloud. The first thing you're gonna to have to learn how to do is figure out where is price in regard to the purple cloud. Is price currently inside the cloud? Is it currently above the cloud? Or is it below the cloud? That is the first skill that you must develop. You must figure out how to define that by just looking where price is in regard, again, to the cloud. And that leads you to step two. What are the red slash blue, both of them, line locations? So those conversion and baselines, what are their locations? What I mean by that are, are they perfectly on top of each other? Or is the red above the blue? Or is the red below the blue? You want to figure out how to visually find that. Again, very simply put, you want to visually be able to find that in regard to where we are at in the cloud. Finally, step number three, this is where things get good. This is our execution piece. Now, when we execute, we are actually, of course, entering the trade. And what we want to do now is on the lower time frame, we'll teach you how to do this in a minute, where are not only the red and blue line, but also both the cloud and the red or blue line. So step number three is just a, is just a mix and a combination of both step number one and step number two and step number three is just doing that on a lower time frame to make sure we're not missing out on any sort of mistakes that we are making in a pullback scenario. So that is your brief breakdown. Now let's dive into each step. Step number one, first things first. If you get a buy signal on the web analyzer, which again, we will discuss this in length in just a minute, but when you get a buy signal on the web analyzer, you wanna make sure that you are always above the cloud. When you get a sell signal on the web analyzer, you want to make sure you are always below the cloud. As you can see here, we never take a trade inside of the cloud. If price is ever on any time frame that we analyze inside of the cloud, we do not take that trade at that time. 
we have to wait until the chart moves so that we are outside of the cloud and then that will lead us to the next point I'm about to make which is our corresponding time frames. So with that said, three corresponding time frames must be all above or below the cloud depending on the signal direction. So as you guys know, if we get a buy signal, three time frames must be above the cloud. If we get a sell signal, three time frames must be below the cloud. In this case, if you're getting a 15 minute signal on the feed on the web analyzer, which is to the left, you're going to want to have your 15 minute, your one hour and your four hour all correspond in the same direction. So if you get a 15 minute buy signal, you want to see the 15 minute be above the cloud, the 15 minute, or I'm sorry, the one hour be above the cloud and the four hour be above the cloud. If in this case at any time one of them is inside or one of them is below, there is no trade and this is not a clean step. And our goal is to have what are called clean steps, which is another word of saying we're checking that box and we want to make sure that everything lines up. On the one hour signals that are called, you're going to be paying attention to corresponding one hour, four hour and daily time frames. And again, not to beat you know, this over and over and over, but I have to, you want to make sure again that these are corresponding in the same direction. So if they're all below the cloud, of course you know that we are looking at a sell signal. If they are all above the cloud, we are looking at a buy signal. Obviously we have to wait for the signal to come in via the feed. On a four hour, you are looking at the four hour, the daily, and the weekly. Again, all time frames must be clean and in the same direction. And then finally, if you get a daily signal, your daily, weekly, and monthly must all be in a clean direction. So as you can see, all we are doing is when we get a signal from a certain time frame, whether it's a 15 minute, a one hour, a four hour, or a daily, we are paying attention to that time frame plus the two above it. So 15 minute, and then the two above it. One hour, two above it. Four hour, two above it. For a total of three time frames being looked at in regard to the cloud direction on this first step. So as we jump over here to the web analyzer, you'll see again that this is the signal feed on the left side. You can feel free to click in and out of these to open up only specific signals. So in our case, we will only be looking in this example at 15 minute signals and we will click that 15 minute checkbox. The next thing you're going to do is when you get a signal, it'll say it'll be red for a sell or it'll be green for a buy and it'll say potential sell and it's at that price of 0.9739. What I will do is I will click this little blue button and it will open the chart for me. Now going back to the slideshow of what we just talked about, our step one was what? Our step one was focused on the direction of the price and the location of the price in regard to the purple cloud. If we get a sell signal, again, we need to see three time frames all below the cloud. So we're going to do that now. Dollar Swiss sell signal at 0.9739. Notice that we are below the cloud right here. Okay, this is where price is in regard to and this is the little green line right here. This is current price. We are clearly below the cloud. That passes our first time frame. We move on to our one hour. We zoom in. Price is, of course, in this case, below the cloud. We are below the cloud at current price. That passes our second time frame, which leads us to our third and final time frame, the four hour. Okay. Notice again we are below the purple. Price is below the purple. Going back to the slideshow here, that would mean if we have a sell signal, we need to be below the cloud and in dollar Swiss, what I just showed you, 15 minute, one hour, and four hour all correspond in the same direction. They're all below. That is what actually lets us check this off and we have officially passed Step one of my three-step system. This is our first check. We need this to happen before we can move on. If in this case, we would to see an example where 
one of the time frames was inside of the cloud or one of the time frames was above the cloud in a cell signal situation, we would not take it. We would not get this checkbox and we would not move on to the next step. We would just simply move on to the next signal. So with that said, we can quickly move on to a new signal using the same step one process. And I want to show you what I mean by not passing the signal. This says potential buy on Euroazi 15 minute. If it says potential buy, you must be above the cloud. Where is price currently? Price is currently below or right now it's pushing below the cloud. As long as it's below, it doesn't matter if it's, it's an open candle or not. If it's below the cloud or inside the cloud at the time we are looking at it, we do not look at taking the trade. All right, you can see that right now we are currently pushing and we are below the cloud, so we do not pass step one in this particular example. So now we will move on to step two, which is your trigger. Okay, so on the time frame the signal was called, that is key right there, those first words. On the time frame the signal was called, meaning if you were looking at 15 minute signals, such as the example that I just showed you, you need to go back to the 15 minute time frame to take a look at this example for step two and the trigger. So on the time frame the signal is called, are the red and blue moving averages in the correct place? And this is the correct place. A sell signal means the red line is below the blue line. This is your trigger. A buy signal means the red line is above the blue line. This is your buy trigger. You need this to happen. So to pass step two, not only did step one have to pass with the time frames, but step two would have to pass as well. Here's what this would look like. I'm back here on this dollar Swiss example that we have been talking about. On dollar Swiss, we already passed step one, which was that we were below the cloud on the 15 minute, the one hour, and the four hour. Now again, going back to the signal time frame, which can be found right here next to your signal, say M15, that means for step two, you need to match that time frame, AKA go to M15. Now you need to look at your red and blue lines. When it says sell, again, according to our uh, terminology and our, according to our strategy that we are using, it says that the red line must be below the blue line. In this case, is the red line below the blue line? Yes, it is. Okay, in fact, if you made it this far along in this video, what I want you to do right now is type in perseverance, type in commitment, Type in attitude. Okay, let me know that you are made it this far in the video. Type in some sort of word like that because if you did, I want to give you a quick shot. I want to let you to let me know who you are because some people won't even make it this far in the video. So that is step two again for this system. Now we move on to step three, which is the execution piece. This is where we actually look to enter the trade. This is when we actually enter the trade. What we want to do now is we want to drop one time frame from the time frame the signal was called on. So a second ago we were just on dollar Swiss which is a 15 minute signal. We want to drop one time frame and we want to make sure the red and blue lines are in the correct direction as well as the cloud location. Okay. So step one and step two already taught you how to do that. Step three does both of those on one time frame. If both of them are in the correct direction, in a sell situation, red is below blue and we are below the cloud. In a buy situation, red is above blue and we are above the cloud. If everything is in the correct location, you can take the trade. You can execute your position. However, if not, if one of them are off or if both of them are off, you have to wait for this to be in the correct location and then you can look to execute the trade. So for your 15 minute signals, your step three, your execution piece will be done on the five minute time frame. For your one hour signals, your execution piece will be dropped to the 15 minute time frame. For your four hour signals, 
your execution piece will be dropped to the one hour time frame, and for your daily signals, your execution piece will be dropped to the four hour time frame. So let's go back to the chart and take a look. In this case, we have a 15 minute signal. What we need to do now is follow that rule set we just had again, and you can scroll back to watch that again. But we just talked about if we have a 15 minute signal, we drop it to a five minute time frame. That is what we will do now. When I drop it down one time frame, I can zoom in by scrolling this up on this side. What do I notice? I take a look at the chart. What do I notice? First thing I notice is red is below blue. Great. The second thing I notice is that the price is currently inside of the cloud. Remembering back to the PowerPoint I just showed you, what did it say? If price is not in the right location on this, we wait until it is, then we take the trade. So what does that mean for us as traders in this specific example? This means you would not execute this position until after the market drops back down and closes below the cloud. Keyword, the candle must close. So right now, this is an open candle where this price is currently buffering. This is an example of a closed candle. The candle must be already history. It must already be painted. It must already be closed in order to justify that trade. It can't be an open price point on that location. Okay, so in this example, we would skip it. Now, if we go to another example, say dollar yen, we can take a look here and rerun through this system at a one, two, three, a little bit of a faster pace. Remembering back to the slideshow, we have three steps. Step one is the clouds. Okay, 15 minute, great. In this case, it's a sell signal, we're below the cloud. One hour, great, we're below the cloud. Four hour, great, we're below the cloud. Go back to the 15 minute. Step two is the location of the red and the blue line. Right now, what do I notice? The red is below the blue, that checks off our step two. Step three is dropping one time frame and taking a look at where current price is at. Right now, current price is inside of the cloud. Would this be a viable signal to take? Not right now. We wait until the market is done with its pullback inside of the cloud, and that's when we actually execute and trade the position. Now, if we were to go up to a one hour time frame, say Euro pound sell signal, no different in our strategy. We just start on the one hour, we move up to our four hour, and then finally our daily. This is a one hour sell signal, so we look at our one hour, we are below the cloud. We look at our four hour, we are above. There is no trade, okay? Now moving further, we have to of course ask ourselves when we decide to execute, okay? When we decide to execute, what do we do now? First things first, you're always wanting to risk 2% max of your account um, balance, okay? 2% max. A lot of people find themselves feeling like it's possible to trade with $100 or $1,000 or $5,000 and make a full-time income. That's not the case, especially when we're following a 2% max rule. The reason that we do this is to mitigate our risk. If we can control our risk, we can be in the trading uh, industry longer and we can be, of course, profitable traders. Second point is a one to two risk reward ratio will be preferred, okay? It is preferred. The reason I say preferred is some of you guys still, regardless of what I put, won't follow it. So I'm just gonna tell you I prefer that. Reason I prefer that is I can still lose trades at a one to two risk reward ratio, yet still make money. If you are constantly risking 10 pips for a reward of three pips, you're never gonna profit in the foreign exchange. But if you're constantly risking 10 pips for a reward of say 20 or 30 pips, you can afford to lose a trade or two, and since you've won a couple, you're still making money, all right? Now, stop loss is always to be placed near recent structure, and target is to be placed near recent structure, okay? Now, what I mean by that is if we were to go back to our dollar Swiss position, 
Obviously, I think it's clear to you guys now that we do not right now have an entry point on this, but I want to talk about this briefly. How would we approach actually putting our stop loss in this situation? Well, the first thing I do is I typically zoom out a little bit and I take a good look at the structure, and this is how I manage my stop loss. On the time frame that we are executing from, in this case, we are executing from the 15 minute time frame. On this time frame, what I want to do is I want to look at what is the most recent big bump in price that happened recently. In this case, I noticed that the market's big bump in price recently was right here. And so for a scalp situation, I want to put my stop loss just above this level, okay? And then on the flip side, what I want to do is I want to watch where has price gone to recently? I think you can all see obviously that the price has recently gone all the way down here. And so I'm going to look to target not the tip of it, but target into the candlestick of that recent structure. So this is structure up here, this is structure down here. Finally, what I want to do is I want to measure and figure out what would my risk to reward be. In this case, this is a short position. So I'll click that and I will click at where I could potentially be entering, which of course would be a little bit down from current price because we are waiting for this pullback to finish up to enter the position. Click around here. Stop loss will be there. Target will be there. Okay. And you can see right there that your risk to reward ratio is a 2.27. That means you are rewarded 2.27 pips for every one pip that you are risking. Again, these are ideal scenarios to get yourself into. Furthermore, on 15 minute trades, on 15 minute signals, once you get up 10 pips into profit, you may move your stop to break even. I do not recommend moving your stop to break even at any point in time on those higher time frame signals just because you're in a completely different uh, ball game and you're going to be waiting for more major swings and you can sometimes get yourself stopped out early. However, on these scalp ones that tend to be way worse of a risk reward ratio, you of course want to help yourself in that situation the best you can. So again, to recap, we have a three step process. Step number one is looking at where is the cloud? Step number two is looking at the location of those red and blue lines. And then step number three is, of course, dropping that time frame and taking a look at not only the cloud, but also the red and blue lines all together. If you follow these steps, what you are about to do is find yourself in trend trading patterns. Traders tend to find themselves in reversal patterns most of the time when they begin to trade. It's just the reality of traders. And what you need to find yourself as doing is finding the trend, as cliche as it may sound, as your friend. And this is exactly what this system is designed to do, is to find the trend for you. You're executing with the trend and you will find yourself executing and winning a much larger percentage of trades. Again, guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope that gave you some value and I hope that allowed you to see some insight in how I trade with the ECC 11 strategy. Again, click that subscribe button and also click that like button. It helps this video get out to more traders. And in the comment section below, let me know if you wanna see any other videos. I'm very excited about growing this YouTube channel. I wanna help you become an independently profitable trader. I'll see you next time.